Hey, Steve with Texas Snow out here. Uh, today I got another project up and maybe it'd be useful to you to uh, see what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of walk you through what I'm working on. I'm going to be replacing a, a motor on a, on a pump. Um, let's go take a look at what's going on. All right, so this noisy thing is the Pentair Whisper Flow. It's a WF28. And um, it's been making this, this hor horrendous noise here for the last few weeks. Um, and I've uh, replaced the gaskets, the impeller, the seal, and um, also the bearings. So it's a motor. And so when it comes to the motor, um, it's just time to swap out the motor. So that's what I'm going to do now. So basically everything's new on the innards except for the motor. So I ordered a Century 2 horsepower. And uh, we're going to get that thing on here and get rid of this messy, noisy uh, piece of metal. First thing you want to do is uh, shut down the power to the, uh, to the pumps. There they go. But you know what I'm going to do? I hate working on electricity. It gives me the creeps. I'm, I'm taking the whole house down. Bam. Down. All right. And while I'm working on this, I want everybody freaking out inside. Like, where's the electricity? Oh my gosh, where's the Wi-Fi? So what do I do here? I lock it. You know, and get in here. Open it up and shock the heck out of me. Okay, so I shut down the uh, electricity, so I came, I'll come back over to the pump. Also, there's this capacitor up here that could also be an issue, but you know what? Um, it's not. I replaced that, too. I did everything except for the uh, for the motor, and because um, uh, you know, that's the most expensive piece. I was trying to avoid. I was hoping it wasn't the motor, but it is, so it is what it is, so we're going into it. This thus is the life of a pool owner. I have a quarter inch right here stock. I'm just going to undo this back. Um, cover okay to expose the wires now remember you want to make sure that the electricity is off and maybe I'm it sounds like I'm saying that a lot but electricity really gives me the, the heebie-jeebies okay so we have our ground wire down here okay and we got a black a green and an orange so we're going to disconnect these and uh, put it on the new uh, motor all right so I unscrewed all the wires so we have our our green wire which is our, our, our ground and then we have since it's 230 volt uh, pump and if you're if you're replacing a 230 uh, volt pump you want to uh, replace it with equal voltage if I'm if I'm wrong tell me in the comment section um, but the black and the orange I believe they're both hot okay there's no um, there's no um, neutral wire here so I'm gonna hook it up the same way they had it here green on ground then I'm gonna put the black one on the L1 and then the orange one on the L2. Okay, and as you can see here, there's like an L1 right here, and then back here is listed L2. And I'm gonna keep the uh, the, the uh, ground wire on the bottom as is, okay? So let me go get the new pump. All right, so I'm gonna need to pull these wires out. This is a screw-in elbow, and you're not gonna, I'm a, I don't wanna screw this whole thing. and. Um, and screw it up okay so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and unscrew this right here this cap at the elbow and then just gently um, and grab once you can see the wires there kind of grab them and then pull everything through okay and then just lay the wires down and then you want to take let me get this away from me and then you want to take this elbow and unscrew it okay unscrew it lefty loosey on that one and there you're gonna have the same configuration hopefully on your pump and you're just gonna screw reuse that elbow so just set it aside all right also don't forget to remove your copper ground wire down here loosen this once you get it loose enough you should be able to shimmy this way shimmy it out a little more there we go okay lay that down you're going to use that for your new pump unfortunately you're not able just to take off the four screws on the on the uh, pump itself on uh, the pump motor itself um, there's a shaft that goes from the back end all the way up here to the impeller uh, which sucks all the water in and so you're actually gonna to have to take off the uh, disassemble the impeller and um, and to pull this motor off and you're gonna be focusing I need to go get a wrench to hold down the shaft right here so I can unscrew the impeller. So let's do that. Okay, so to take off this housing, we're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket and your ratchet. 
you're gonna have six screws you're gonna undo. One, two, one down here, three, and a mirror image on the other side. Four, five, and one down here, six. So, lefty loosey on these. Let's go. Okay, got those six screws off. Notice two of them have bolts. All of them have washers, two of them have bolts. The two longer ones have bolts, and those are the ones that are gonna go on your sides right here and right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the same um, uh, ratchet and socket and take off these four off the housing. Be right back. Okay, so now I need to get this um, um, motor off of this uh, seal plate here. Okay, so I'm gonna got 14 millimeters still. I'm going in. And on this one, I'm gonna have to get, uh, can I get it? Uh, I'm gonna get a wrench on that one. That one's just, I can't get it in because the head on the ratchet is too big. All right, and that one too. I'm having little difficulties here. All right, I can get this one though. Okay, so two on the right are working for me, and one on the left is not. All right. So let me get a wrench on those. Okay, just a little adaptation here and there to get this working the way you want to. That's life though, isn't it? Adapting. Okay, I'm going to screw these off and I'll be right back. Alright, so I got the four screws over there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this motor and the seal plate off. You grab it from the back end. And there you go. It gets a little messy. That's okay though. Hey, your pull owner used to getting wet. These are all new gaskets. The diffuser is in good shape. Um, I know that. So what I want to do is um, go ahead and pull this over here and work on it. And we'll talk about what we need to do. I'm gonna pull it out so we can uh, I can have a better hands on it. Okay, so I got here on the back end of my truck. Um, this is going to be your uh, seal plate right here. That's where we took the six screws off of. And then this is your diffuser. If you notice here, there's going to be a gasket right here. Um, when, um, you know, it's been about five years. And I got to say, I'm a little bit disappointed in Pentair because five years running the pump seven, eight hours a day, I think it should last a lot longer than that. Um, but anyhow, um, you have a seal here. You have a, a seal gasket right here. Okay, then right here on this diffuser, you're going to have uh, two screws right here, two small screws. You're going to need a small Allen wrench, and it looks like I'm going to be using 332. I'll just go in there. It's going to be lefty-loosey on this one, okay? Um, at some point, you can just get it out here and then just uh, kind of finger roll it out. Okay, there's that one. And get the one down here as well. If you're working out in the yard and you're by grass, be careful because you can drop these real easy. And... That would be a nightmare trying to find these sometimes in high grass. Okay, there we go. I just keep them in there. All right, and it just looks like that from the back end. Okay, I got the motor assembly out here on the bed of the truck. What I need to do is take this um, impeller off. Okay, but there's a screw right here that we need to undo. Okay, and then also uh, we need to stabilize this back rod. If you notice here, I'm going to spin the impeller so it goes left and right, and it's real smooth because I just replaced the bearings. But you see how it. It moves back there too, so you won't be able to spin it off unless you keep that secure. So we're going to get a, a wrench back there. Okay, keep that in place. Unscrew. And it's going to be to the right. Okay, you're unscrewing to the right. So I know it's usually lefty loosey, but in this case, it's righty loosey. Okay, remember if you're working out in the grass, keep holding your pieces and put them in a knife safe spot. Okay, so let's get this wrench back here, stabilize, and hold that, and then we're going to take this impeller, and then we're going to we're going to screw it off. There we go. All right. So then it should come off nice and easy. Notice back here, there is a. Um, so let me take it out. There's a gasket in here. We're just going to keep it in there, I guess. The gasket in there and if you get a new impeller make sure that you take usually these don't come with it unless you buy the seal kit make sure you get it off your old one I, I encourage you to replace this though so look for make sure you get that gasket for the impeller all right so now this is the seal I replaced right here okay that's brand new all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna separate the, the housing Alright, so everything is done. So I'm going to keep 
pressure plate, the seal. Get my new gasket on there. Put my impeller back on. And then get my diffuser on there and screw that in. And I'm gonna replace it with my motor right here. All right, so you notice here, I'm replacing the Sentry with the Pentair. I'm gonna give this baby a try. Um, it comes with a capacitor. It's um, the same specifications, okay? So let's go over this real quick. I had to make sure in order for this to work on this particular pump that um, it had this 56Y frame, okay? So you're looking for 56Y frame. Let's see if I can get in there a little closer. There you go. And then also, um, this is a two horsepower. I'm replacing it with a two horsepower and 230 volts. Um, so there we go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this on. We're gonna assemble it just in the reverse fashion. It has an L1 and L2 and then the ground and then also the, the ground down here. So it's the same configuration. It's gonna come with a back plate as well. Okay, brand new. So um, this, is, uh, this is looking good and easy to, to take care of. Here you have your shaft. You wanna take off this rubber, protective rubber piece because that's where you're going to screw your impeller on. Okay, so we're going to go in the reverse order. We're going to get the plate on. Okay, so I got my plate on the motor. Remember, we had those four screws that came in the back side of them. Well, I got them right here. I'm going to put them in and tighten them down. Okay, well, I'm getting these last this last screw on. Like I said, they were little boogers because it's kind of a tight area in my ratchet that I had. Didn't want to fit in there and come out easily. It was going in the angle. I didn't want to strip the threading, so I'm just using this this wrench. All right, so they're in there. I'm going to set this back up right. There we go. I'm going to screw this on tightly because you want a snug fit with between those, those other gaskets. Okay, so I got this. I'm going to go to the other side, get the wrench on there, and give it a little torque with my hand. Okay, I got the wrench set up here, and since we're turning this to the right, it's going to put pressure down on the back of the bed of the truck. And I am just gonna just give it a good <laughs> torque down. There we go. And now we want to get our screw. Get our screw in there. And remember, on this one we want to go to the left to tighten it down. Okay, so I'm going to the left to tighten it. All right. All right. Now we want to get our diffuser on. So we want to match the screws up to where we took them out from. Okay. Get our Allen wrench and screw them in. Remember, we're just hand tightening. Don't overdo it. This is all just plastic housing and it can crack easily. Okay, let's go ahead and get our gasket on. This is a new gasket. It only goes on one way. It's already preformed. All right, now let's take this bad boy over to the pump station and get it assembled. Okay. So now we want to take our uh, motor and our assembly here and we want to attach it and you want to make sure you're not making too quick of jerky movements because you have a gasket here and here and you don't want it to, to um, get off of its track so you want to put it on the motor holder down below and then gently bring these two together just like that okay once you get it together Get your one screw in, just hand tightens good, and that's just enough to get it set. I'm going to go ahead and get the other six screws in. Remember the two side ones have a nut. You don't want to over tighten this. Let the gasket do its work, but you don't want it too loose, but you want it nice and firm. You can feel it when it gets too tight, and if your, and if your um, washers are starting to curl because of the tightness, you need to back off a little bit. Alright, got them all on. Now. What we want to do is get our connection, the electrical the connection together. All right, remember that elbow that we took off? Well, we need to put it back on. This one looks like it has a cap that was put in there. Just unscrew that, discard it, you don't need it. And then let's go ahead and thread this one together before we put our wires in. You notice there's a little gasket right here. We want to go to that. There you go, nice and snug. Remember it's plastic, it can break easily. Don't force anything. Okay, now let's get our wires, and we're going to feed them through. I'm going to need two hands for this. Okay, remember, our electricity is off. Do not attempt this without having your electricity off at the breaker box. Kill it all. All right, or it'll kill you, so make sure you're careful. Um, 
I fed it. I fed it through, and I tried to go like the black and the orange first, and I fed the green through. It was just a little much for all three of them. You get all three of them in, great. As you see, they're here. I'm gonna put the black on the L1, the orange on the L2, the green on the ground, and don't forget your copper down below. I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. But before I do that, I want to make sure I kind of lock all these into place. So I'm gonna bring my screw cap up, and I'm gonna tighten this in. So that our wires don't go anywhere while I'm trying to work with them. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, got everything hooked up. I got my green on my ground. I got my black on my L1, my orange on my L2, and then my, my ground wire down there also um, on, on, on the bottom part of the plate. Uh, this is a good time for you just to make sure everything's nice and snug in there, that there's no slipping, wires aren't touching each other. There, see that right there, I just caught that one. That one. That one went in just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so everything looks really good. Um, I'm sorry. Um, got everything set up nice. Now we need to just put our back plate on. Okay, so here's the back plate. We're just going to fit this bad boy right over. There we go. Get that screw in. Go and tighten that down. I'll be right back. All right, there we go. Nice and snug. Centurion on. And speaking of on, let's turn it on. Let's go get that breaker box. All right. Lock that baby. Let's get the uh, main power on. And then we're going to go ahead and flip on the pump breakers. All right. Well, the kids started cheering because the electricity went on. I guess the Wi-Fi is back in action. All right. So, got everything hooked up. I'm, letting, I'm leading some water into it. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get this pump turned on now. And uh, release some of the air that's, that's going to be uh, trapped in the system. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Takes a while to process it, there we go. Remember to release that air. You don't want the tank to hit some high PSI. Alright, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. Listen. Ah, back in business, baby. So quiet, so beautiful. Mm, love it.